Good evening, everyone. Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com with our last break of the Thursday night. <clears throat> Excuse me. Because my voice lasted this long. I was out for the last couple nights because of the voice. <clears throat> but I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'll make it through this one. 2019 Bowman Baseball, 8-box, Jumbo Edition. Pick your team number 10 from jazbeescasebreaks.com. Big thanks to all of these folks for getting into it. Robert L., Last Bod Mojo, Pirates. Got the Blue Jays, too. All right. Here it is. Here we go. Ooh. It's a heavy one. And this will pre pretty much bring us right to the end of the broadcast, ladies and gentlemen. So anything else that fills up after this uh, will break first thing tomorrow. And, of course, NT basketball tomorrow, too, so. That'll be, that'll be a lot of fun. <laughs> you can pre-order now at jazbeescasebreaks.com. All right, this jumbo break right here. Four boxes on the left side, four boxes on the right side. Three autos per box. Settle in, folks. Get comfortable and good luck. This guy's getting called up. Vlad Guerrero Jr., he's on the box. Oh, and we'll do a recap video at the end of this, too. So keep that in mind. If you're like, man, Joe, Mom, can't stay up this late to watch all of this. You do a recap video, we will. There'll be a recap video after this. So if you're watching live, but you got to be like, I got to go to bed. I got work tomorrow. Or if you're watching the replay and you're like, I don't want to watch an hour of this, hour and a half of this. Well, recap video. So you just set these half and half right here. Okay. So there'll be a recap video. So double check all of that. Chris Ziegler is here too. Chris, what team do you have? Do I see you on this list? I'm feeling great, just uh, Mr. Mike's daddy. Just the uh, the the uh, the throat, the voice is not 100. percent My cat-like reflexes save that. So just gotta take it a little easy on the voice, and that should be fine. Otherwise, you and I are gonna have to learn American Sign Language pretty quickly. Oh, Chris, you're just spectating. All right, well, welcome. Spectating is cool, too. A lot going on, folks. Vlad Guerrero Jr. being called up. Carter Keboom for the uh, Nationals also being called up. We've seen his name over the last couple of years a lot. Pretty big prospect. NFL draft happening right here. John Sampson just watched some NT basketball being busted open. It's a little early for that, isn't it? Not supposed to be on tomorrow. All right. Also, John, weren't you watching Avengers tonight? There's a I got to cut down on that wedding singer side hustle. And my and my four pack a day habit. Wait, I missed a Vlad Guerrero Jr. Super Fractor, Brian O. When? There's Lion Richardson for the Reds. That's our first autograph of this break. First of twenty four. That goes to Mark Goldstein with the Reds. Oh, you're leaving in ten minutes. Okay. No spoilers, John. When you come back. Not that I'm a huge Avengers guy. I guess I wouldn't really care, but I'm sure there are people in the chat who do. I know. I mean, I saw the... I've, I've watched them. They're pretty entertaining. The 
their facsimile autographs, of course. I heard um, it's it's a long one, isn't it? Avengers, a new Avengers movie. Um, I think I think I think Avengers is like what probably three Bowman jumbos long. Three hobbies, Woo. two and a half hobbies. There's Danny Jensen to the four ninety. What if we just? What if all times are just based on Bowman cases? Three hours. That's like, oh boy, that's and and then all the previews. Right, I got to go with here with the recliner, absolutely. Especially for a late night showing, yeah, on a school night, John Samuelson, you going nuts. I, I don't know. You run the risk of falling asleep though. <laughs> a couple of beers and then three, four beers on a Wednesday night snooze. Out of four ninety nine, Evan White, refractor. Which we will top load, which our shipping team will take care of. Just in the interest of time, we're just gonna sleeve it, set it off to the side. Per usual, I think all I think all of my uh, I think all all of our, our we should just change time, ladies and gentlemen, and everything should be based off of the length of a jumbo case or a hobby case. Yeah, how long is that? How long is that movie? You know, it's like oh. You know, it's a it's a few a uh, few Bowman hobbies long. Oh, that's a long movie. It is. Hey, how long do you think before you're gonna get here? Um, uh, probably about a Bowman Jumbo. I'll be there in about a Bowman Jumbo. Okay, I got you. See you then, Adrian Morahone. What a home. How long were you stuck in traffic? Like a Bowman hobby case long. That's crazy. That's a good suggestion, Eric Bailey. John Samuelson, pop on the pop on those depends before you start watching the movie. It's not a bad call. Remember the, uh, the crazy astronaut? And she had, uh, she was in like this, this like love triangle with two other astronauts. And they were all like officers, you know? I mean, they gotta be, their astronauts are all like, you know, ranked very well. And like, she was driving up to like kidnap the other woman or something like that. And she had like, Adult diapers and duct tape and rope in the bed. It's crazy. All right. You are due to receive Chrome Prospect Autograph Refractor Parallel of Diego Cartaya for the Dodgers. I think he's the only prospect redemption I've seen in this. Other redemptions tend to be like bigger names, but for prospects, he's the only guy. Come on, Diego. Sign your cards, buddy. He's got my Dodgers. Rich with my Dodgers. So that's your third autograph of the first box. Let's just breeze through the rest of these. Look for some parallels. 16 out of 50, Brent Honeywell, gold chrome. Just paper at the end. Wow! So the guy, so the person who got the insert super fractor, um, Vlad Guerrero, got randomized the Jays in a spot random. That's wild, and the guy doesn't even collect baseball.
and then hit the Vlad Super. That is wild. Right, and Eric Bailey saying he was surprised that it was a jumbo case break. He thought it was just a hobby case. Good for him, though. Sometimes when you when you don't have any expectations going into a break, that's when like you have the best break. <laughs> All right, box two. And he's getting it graded with BGS next month. Awesome. That's pretty cool. Good for him. I like stories like that. Just kind of stumble into it. Now, I wonder too. Ben's asking. He wonders how much that'll pull on an open market. Let's say it grades like... 995 or something like that. Non auto. Let's say it grades a 9 or a 95. What does that go for? What insert was it? You guys remember? And you guys were all begging for it to fill that night too, and everyone had a chance, but the guy who doesn't collect baseball ends up with it. And maybe he'll start collecting baseball now. All right, next three autographs. Oh, it was like a ready for the show, welcome to the show insert, ready for the show insert. Still, that's pretty cool though. Brian Anderson, blue paper to 150. That's for the fish. That goes to Ben. What up, Kurt? Pulling heat tonight? Yeah, as always. Per use. Solid start thus far. Well, maybe looking for some of this guy right here. Oh, so one of these. One of these ready for the show. Super fast. So pretty cool. There's Eli Morgan. 70 out of 250. Purple Chrome autograph for Eric Bailey and the Tribe. There you go, Eric. Wow. John Samson, I put a Vlad Jr. green insert to 99 for uh, the top 100 prospects. The Bowman Top 100, and that thing shot up to 10 bucks within like three hours. Isn't that crazy? Just even that to 99. Brian O's thinking it'll get just raw, it'll be 1200 bucks, decent grade, 2000. What if it had ink on it? That's crazy. Vlad better deliver. I mean, he's raking, and I mean, he has nothing to prove. This guy's raking too. He has nothing to prove in the minors. I mean, I think I think he was just hitting 450 foot home runs left and right. So he has nothing left to prove there. There's Joey Wentz, a speckle to 299. Blue Jays aren't really going anywhere either. They might as well call him up. I think Boba Shed got an injury recently, though, right? I think I saw that somewhere. So he'll be out for a little bit. Yeah, Eric Bailey thinks that's a good guess too, Brino. So right around there, that's crazy. Dylan Cease to one fifty atomic. Thank you. 
Oh, someone offered a hundred bucks to buy the Blue Jays after he won the team. Ooh, imagine another redemption. It's Diego Cartaya this time, just a regular Chrome prospect autograph, no parallel. That's another one for the Dodgers. He's a catching prospect for the Dodgers. Dodgers have a few great catching prospects in their in their Baseball America top thirty organizational picks. It's another one for Rich and the Dodgers. And I, th I think if you if you end up selling a team or something, like that, I think you're tempting fate. You know, that's that's why I get so nervous. I mean, we like to just offer the trade window, but in random team breaks, but man, I get nervous if if I would if I I would never make a trade. I'll just be like, I'm just gonna let random dot org just you know just rule my fate. There's Cole Wynn to two fifty purple paper. I would never sell the team. I would just keep it. I'd be like, this is this is this is what fate has in store for me. I certainly wouldn't take a hundred bucks. Imagine, how, I mean, how much would the Blue Jays cost? How much would the Blue Jays cost straight up? People have purchased them straight up. There's Broussard Great Oral to 125. Man, brown spot random and flaws hit a Baker RPA to 15. Maybe I should take some more nights off. Everyone will get mo like monster hits. Um, only have two, so looking for one more autograph in this box. And, yeah, no, they haven't talked to Mike Mayock yet. There's Lion Richardson, gold. That card is gold for Mark Goldstein. There you go, some gold for gold. Nice. Another three. Yeah, I just put mine in the front right there. That's true. I did. I did get that Barry Sanders. Yeah, it's just just the just the Jaspy shot magic. Really, it's you guys. If you guys weren't filling out so many breaks, we would not be getting the at bats to put in to end up getting those big hits. We've got to get the ABs in, ladies and gentlemen. Got to get the at bats in to get the big hits. As long as our customers, our crew keeps. Selling out cases, we keep having opportunities to pull sick hits. Maybe some of them end up in your hands, so that's that's the idea. What was the randomizer? You have to randomize a one of one from Prime Cuts. Wait, who is that? Oh, Ted Williams and Joe DiMaggio, dual relic from Prime Cuts. I hate randomizers too. I wish everyone would just look at the checklist. And buy the team that is like, if there's like a dual auto or something like that. Buy just buy the second team, just in case, just insurance.
Ooh, Brian O saying, I like how you said crew. Precursor, perhaps? Precursor to a Brewers hit? If you're wondering who has the Brewers, it's Brian O. Brian, did you say, were you saying earlier that Keston Hiuta may be called up this year sooner rather than later? That'd be good for the hobby. See that guy in action? Hey, Mike Mayock. I guess he's coming up next. All right, so you're going to make me wait for Mike Mayock. There's Jesus Lazardo to 499. Jesus Lazardo has a great. Sad, but great story. Parkland, Florida is where he's from. Remember that big school shooting in Parkland, Florida? He did a lot for that community. I think his like, old baseball coach was somehow injured or something happened. In it, so That's where he's from. Oh, yeah, you can grab those, yeah. Yeah, Brian O saying, yeah, Jesus Aguilar has options and is a black hole. They're going to bring him up, sending Shaw, Travis Shaw to first and Moose to third, and then Keston plays second. Yeah, this is it for me. And he's tearing up Triple A. He's in Triple A already? I think he is. And there's, uh, well, there's a brewer right there, Brian. Uh, but for the Royals, that's Brewer Hicklin. 423 out of 499 for the Royals. This one goes to Rich Schmidt. Keston Huda is the, uh, I think he grew up near near uh, Six Flags Magic Mountain here in Southern California. There you go, Rich. And um, I think he's like the first first round pick from UC Irvine, like ever. <laughs> It's kind of random, yeah. You don't think of you don't think of UC Irvine, home of the Ant Eaters, to uh, to produce that kind of baseball talent. You know, I got a little nervous too because because uh, remember Dylan Tate for the. I think he's with the Yankees now. Was originally drafted by the Rangers, pretty high up. Dylan Tate, who hasn't really made it to the majors yet, it was a first-round pick from UC Santa Barbara, home of the Gauchos, I think. He hasn't really made an impact yet. All right, still looking for two more autographs in this box. There's 8 out of 50, Genesis Cabrera. That Bowman Sterling design that'll go to Michael Kuntz. Oh. All right, Joe, see me now, then. All right, hasta luego. All right, there's Peter Lambert. And there's Eduardo Cabrera, or Edward Cabrera, sorry, not Eduardo, just Edward. And that is for the fish. That goes to Ben with the Miami Marlins. Mike Mayock, NFL draft today, of course. That's been on all of every, on everyone's minds today. All right, DJ, you ready to do this? Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's fire Raiders camp right now for the general manager of the 
Oakland Raiders, there he is, Mike Mayock. How you doing, Mike? How was it for you tonight's first draft as GM? It was pretty cool, I'm not going to lie. Um, had more butterflies than I expected, a little more nervous than I expected. Uh, it almost felt like, you know, being a lot of years ago and getting ready to play real good. Chance Adams, purple paper to 250. Uh, and Matt Mercer to 250, purple chrome. So let's get to uh, your first choice of uh, Cleveland, Cleveland Farrell, Mike. Uh, lots of conversation of why you chose him over so many other folks that were at the top of mock drafts, which I know you used to love when you were doing the television thing. Uh, walk us through that process here. Yeah, I, I think, uh, Rich, day one, when I took the job and I sat down with John Gruden, he asked me what was important about developing... Julio Rodriguez, 499. John, it, 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 to me, it's all about foundation players. And, and I developed foundation as, as both character and football talent. And you better love the game, you better have a passion for it, because nobody has a bigger passion for the game than John Gruden does, or I do. And when we started really getting in-depth to, all right, we've got our grades, we know where we're stacking everybody, who's a Raider? What fits the Raider? And not just Cleve Farrell. Yeah, sell me on it, Mike Mayock. I, mean, I don't care where people rank him. Okay, Cleve Farrell for us is a foundation player. He's a building block, as is Jacobs, as is Abram. And their football character is off the chart, and we also think their football playing abilities. Should be one more. The there it is. Mike, it Nate Lowe like you, for the Rays. Daniel D. with Tampa Bay. Florida teams hitting. Next box. Mike Mayock. Three more autographs to go. Here we go. Another three. Let's see some big names here. There's some solid ones so far. Maybe this guy, Fernando Tatis Jr. to Blue Chrome to 150. Yeah, I mean, I think so, Chris. Chris Maxwell saying, hey, Joe, the Raiders did okay. Filled some holes. Mike Mayock selling me on it right now on TV. I want to believe... Mike. Because we think one or two of them are going to be on the board. Or, you know, we can roll the dice a little bit, move down. No, I mean, in reality, the Raiders have so many holes that it's just like, all right, just can't be too cute with the pigs. It's just like, just grow. These guys are all smart, a lot smarter than I am about the football. So, hey, if you think that's the guy, sure, go for it. <laughs> going to need that guy. And there's Steel Walker. White Sox, David Duffy with the Shy Sox.
We'll see what happens in round two tomorrow. Raiders will be picking early in round two. It'll be interesting to see where they go from there. Yeah, they got a lot of holes to fill. Let's just keep adding best availables all around. I'm glad they didn't do something silly. <laughs> I was nervous that, that they were going to get too cute. Maybe try to trade up for Kyler Murray or something wacky like that. But nice Chad Spangenberger to 50. Nice gold shimmer. For Robert Lati and the Blue Jays. Nice, Robert L. I like that gold. Forty-eight out of fifty on that one. You're welcome, Robert. All right, so going back to Keston Hewitt, we were talking about a little bit earlier. Brian O saying, hey, 20 games, AAA, batting 298, five homers, 13 RBIs. Not as good as I thought, but yeah, but good power. I think that power developed more than I think a lot of scouts were thinking, too. Does he have a good glove? I think he has a good glove, right? That's what's going to keep him up, you know. I think the there's Tuki Toussaint got sent back down to the minors. Four nine. He's got to work on a little bit of that control, but he's got lights out stuff. Just a lot of swing and miss stuff if he can stay up. Keep the walks out. If he's got a good glove. That's going to keep you. That's going to keep a young player in the league through any sort of rookie slump. Hitting slump, that is. So it should be one more autograph in this stack here. Kevin Pilar made his way back to Toronto after being traded to the Giants. And we've got Elujeres Montero. Speckle, 293 out of 299 for the Redbirds. That's going to go to Mike Coops. What do you think, folks? I know we're in the middle of a baseball break. Do you think Josh Rosen gets traded this weekend, or do you think it's going to take a while for a deal to get made? Or do they keep Josh Rosen and Kyler Murray? 
Maybe maybe we'll have to put up a Twitter poll tomorrow. At Jaspie's Breaks, our Twitter handle. Brian Hayes to 125 for the Buckos. And there you go. We are halfway through this eight box break, ladies and gentlemen. We're making some decent time here. Got about another 35, 40 minutes to go in this one. We'll do a recap video right after this. That'll bring us right to the end of the night. Brian O saying Miller Park turns into a band box in the summer too. We haven't had a good second baseman with a power and a glove for quite some time. Who was the last one? I thought I thought that uh oops, sorry, I hit the wrong button. I thought uh I thought Jonathan Scope was a great pickup. I really like him. And he's he's doing well for the twins now. It just didn't work out. Just didn't work out for the Brewers. I don't think he was I don't know if he was quite ready for that. It's weird. It's I, I think I think the uh, the uh, O's have been the only organization that he's ever known, and I think that that trade maybe kind of rattled him a little bit. But he's doing all right in Minnesota. Seems to be settling in nicely. Nice yeah, oh, Scooter Jeanette. You guys had Scooter Jeanette for a minute or two. I want to go to Miller Park. I think the national is in uh, is in Chicago this summer. I might try to sneak up to Milwaukee really quick to to uh, see a ball game there, which would be pretty cool. I think what fascinates me about Miller Park is the huge they've got huge windows in the back, right? Like if this is if this is home plate in that center field out there, you've got these huge windows that let natural light come in to so they can have have grass. Natural grounds. Eric Bailey saying, I think no one's going to offer much more than a second round pick for Josh Rosen. That'd be interesting, right? Second round tomorrow. So, that, yeah, I, I think I agree with you. So, I wonder if anyone's going to try to make that move. If someone's going to say, here's a, here's a pick. You know, that's what the teams that need quarterbacks, that's where they're, th they're thinking. You know, would a second round pick plus. Maybe a, a player, or maybe a couple picks, future picks. You know, would that would that do the trick? Yeah, Dolphins could be a good one, but Eric, Eric Bailey thinking maybe they hold out for Tua next year. All right. Nate Person, Speckle to 299, 29 out of 299. Oh, we, yeah, we can't do tailgating in LA. I've never tailgated in my entire life. Can't do that around here. We can't have nice things here, Brian, in Los Angeles. There's Blaze Alexander. He's got quite an autograph. Befitting a Blaze. Jeffrey Goldberg with the Diamondbacks. No, I have been tailgating. Uh, I think when the, when the Padres used to play at... at uh, Jack Murphy's at Qualcomm. It used to be called Jack Murphy Stadium. At Qualcomm. And, um, you know, it's a big bowl stadium with just one of the, like, huge, big concrete parking lot. And, um, I mean, I wouldn't really call it tailgating. It was just drinking a case of beer before going into the stadium. There's Alec Baum. Not by myself. I would have friends to drink the case with me. Alec Baum Atomic to 150.
Yeah, Rex. Yeah, Ellie. Is... It's nice. I don't know if it's not the safest in certain parts of town. There is Roberto Ramos to four ninety nine. There's one, there was one good idea that previous ownership, Frank McCourt, had. Not the author who wrote Angela's Ashes, but Frank McCourt, the parking lot owner from Boston, who bought the Dodgers and then almost sank it into the ground. Um, SOB. Uh, he did have one good idea for remodeling Dodger Stadium was was to build a like kind of a ring of green around a Dodger Stadium. There'll be like uh, picnic benches and like, like a kind of park area and whatnot for for people to hang out and stuff. Like I thought that was a good idea. You know, there's no t there's no tailgating, but people could technically tailgate there. Um, you know, it's easier to kind of concentrate like security and stuff around there instead of those vast parking lots. Um, but they didn't end up doing that. I hope they. I hope they maybe will do that at some point. It'd be nice, because it is a. Uh, you can go up to Dodger Stadium, um, on off days. They have a. They have a shop at the stadium that's open, and they let you just wander into the stadium and you can eat lunch like, in one of the seats out there, because it's on a. It's on like L.A. County like parkland. So, I think you can, go up there, and if, and I know you can go up there and you can. Grab some lunch and sit in some seats and eat lunch. Let's do it. Even in true Midwestern style, Usher sell tickets in the sixth inning. They have 50-50 raffles every game. Yeah, I didn't learn about 50-50 raffles until I went to a game in the Midwest. And I was like, wait, what are these? This is like, this is gambling. This is great. <laughs> I love it. Oh, yeah, you don't do 50-50 raffles at Dodgers Stadium? No, we don't. We don't do 50-50 raffles here. I don't know. Markets are definitely different. There's Dylan Cease for the White Sox. One, looking for one more autograph. Um, Brian, I was watching, I think I was watching some basketball. And um, and Rory was in the room. We were, hang, we were hanging out. And I was and I was watching like halftime shows. And I was like, oh, man. Someone at the Lakers game hit a half court shot, and won a hundred thousand dollars, <laughs> you know. And Rory's like, "What? They gave away a hundred thousand dollars?" Like, yeah. It's like you'd be lucky to get a thousand dollars here in Milwaukee. What are you talking about? It's like, yeah, the, some some casino sponsored it, a hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> Maybe it was like fifty thousand dollars, but it was a lot. And I was like, "That's what they give away all the time." And, and Rory, I could see Rory, I could see him shaking his head in the chat. He was like, "Man, you guys in LA." <laughs> There's Mateo Gill for the Cardinals. That's going to go to Michael Kuntz. Brian, oh, you played two baseball games on the field at Miller Park. What was the context? I would say, I would say state championship, some sort of state championship for some high school thing or little league. Pony League. There's Leody Tavares, to 250, Purple Chrome. They give you a plane ticket here, says Brian O in Milwaukee. Take the plane ticket, go to a Lakers game, win $100,000. All right, next box. 
If you were if you were a GM for any sport, what would it be like? What would be the most fun draft to do as a GM? Is it football? It's not baseball. I mean, I love baseball. I mean, I would be the most knowledgeable in baseball, but I just I just couldn't do it. So many players, so many high school kids, so many rounds. You know, it, it would just be, I feel like that would just be a lot of work. I mean, I know you have a team and everything, but so I think basketball would be the most. It's only two rounds. You know, but, but like, these are players that could make instant impacts on your team, like right away. Baseball, you're like waiting for like, you know, years before you're gonna see these these players bear fruit. In the NFL, there's just way too many players, so not one individual play. You can draft the the you can draft a Saquon Barkley. That doesn't mean you're gonna get wins, you know. But in basketball, you can draft one player, and that could equal wins right away. So I think you see like like results. That's how I would be. A, I would be an NBA GM. And I feel like the contracts are a little more interesting in the NBA, like the building out contracts. I feel like uh, I feel like uh, football. There's like guaranteed money, not guaranteed money. Like I don't know how what to to give these people. How do I even determine that? So anyway, that's right. Real time ref. Robert, no, well, I don't think there's any vet, there's barely any vet stuff in here, but no cape or vet chrome, but no paper ships in this. I think the vets are only paper anyway. Ah, you sold beer, four miller quite, quite some time, then you had a athletic beer dude play a game. Ooh, that's fun. Well, who would you play? Would you play, like, those guys at Coors? Play the Budweiser guys? Wow, you get a uniform with your name on the back? You play you play softball or hardball out there? How serious was it? But, yeah, see, most of, the, most of your veteran players are going to be paper, so no paper ships, right? And I think most of the, most if not all of the Chrome cards are prospects anyway, so all of those are going to ship. And of course, stuff like the parallels, of course, for vets will ship. There's Whit Merrifield to 499 Nice, you hit, you hit the underground cages. Name on the board, announce when you're up to bat. You pitch for a few innings. That's pretty cool. Hardball as well? Nice. Well, that's serious. That's that's serious business. That sounds like the uh sounds like the old days, Brian O. One of the old old guys at the uh at the brewery would be the boys of summer. They would work at the brewery in the fall or their that would be their day jobs. Go play some uh go play some baseball. It's like the 1930s. 40s. Something like that. 50s? When that stuff still happened? Probably 1920s? 1920s maybe? No. Yeah, probably 1920s. 30s, 40s around there. Guys working at the brewery. Working for the factory, the local factory. They would have uh, they would have baseball leagues showed up and thousands of people around town would come by. Pay, pay a nickel to get in. There's Julio Rodriguez. Those are the days, folks. You guys remember those days? I remember those days. I think I'm going to go to the uh, the Grammy Museum in downtown LA, ladies and gentlemen. They have like a music and baseball exhibit there that I'm going to check out. Apparently there's a Fender Telecaster Jackie Robinson edition. Maybe signed by Jackie? I don't think it's signed by Jackie. But 
There's some something going on there. Old renditions of Take Me Out to the Ball Game. Which the first recording was early 1900, 1908 or something like that. So wait, Rex, is your so is your son gonna be a professional basketball player? Should we sponsor him? AP, what's going on? Yeah, I made it. Made it. Barely. Voice is still not a hundred percent, but gotta take it easy on that. Otherwise, we're all gonna have to learn American Sign Language. And there's Victor Mesa Jr. Not Victor Victor, but his brother Victor Mesa Jr. to 499. That's for Ben Severia. Still a top 30 organizational prospect for Baseball America. His brother Victor Victor is like one in that organization. Well, I like that, Rex. I, yeah, I saw, I saw, I read, read that story earlier, Rex. I think he, I think he should. I was like, I was like, Indiana, definitely a ba basketball state. Just tell him to take. How old? How old is he? Then we can ride on the coattails. <laughs> yeah, I got throat hurt. It's not good. Eight years old. All right. All right, Rex. Well, do you guys, you have a, you have a hoop out there somewhere? You can, you can shoot. Buy him a basketball. Tell him, hey, you know. I'm saying like a thousand jump shots a day. There's Seth Beer. Mm, beer. Speaking of beer, Brian, out of 499 for the Astros. That goes to Keith Manuel. Well, you got to fuel the interest, Rex. I does he have a basketball? Buy him a, if he doesn't, buy him a basketball like ASAP. Like get out there, do it. We we're talking about Keston Hewitt earlier. There he is, ready for the show. And we've got uh Freudus Nova Refractor to four ninety nine. Oh, there we go. Okay, okay, Rex. I see. So you're not Rex is not coordinated to help him out. Hey, all you gotta do is just rebound and pass the ball back to him, Rex. And just have him take a thousand jump shots a day. Work on that outside shot, left hand, right hand. Get him ambidextrous. Dribble to the left, dribble to the right. Get some cones out there. Have him work the cones. Got to have him run some suicides. Get that, get that fast twitch muscle worked up. And Connor Capel. And that's for the Indian. That goes to Eric Bailey and the tribe. There's your three right there. Two more to go. Six autographs to go. Three in here. Three in there. Recap video. And then we're donezos, ladies and gentlemen.
Ah, oh, that's Ryan O's life these days. Jaspie breaks and passing the ball to your three-year-old, Bennett, to shoot Jays at the Jordan Jammer in the living room. There you go. See? Get him started young. College is expensive these days. Get, get the kids get the kids on a sports scholarship. Get them in there. Or worse comes to worse. Uh, you can also make sure that they can also become professional video game players. That's the thing now. So if if you realize, oh, my 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 spawn do not have any athleticness in their genes, you know, they can become a professional. Uh, they can become professional uh, video gamers. There's guys that play. Uh, Guys that play like FIFA soccer on the on the Xbox, Madden for like for like uh, you know tons of money. And when they can win a bunch of money in tournaments, do I'm sure there's basketball there leagues too. I think there are actually. I think actually some basketball leagues. Someone now, someone may know more about this than I do, but I'm pretty sure that some pro teams will sponsor. They're like an NBA, like 2K league or something like that. Yes? No? Maybe? So they'll have like a, a, a team sanctioned like video game team to go out and do tournaments and stuff like that. See? So there's always that. So be sure to, be sure to encourage that as well. There's Chad's Magic Burger for the Blue Jays. Right, so let's slide that over there. Is he going to be ready for the show? He's coming up, called, being called up tomorrow, boys and girls. So we'll, we'll, we'll keep an eye on that when we're breaking tomorrow, see how... How his first day goes. When do the Blue Jays play tomorrow? Do I have a schedule here? Robert with the Blue Jays, by the way. Oh, so Rex, Rex, your son injury prone. So maybe he has injury prone tag. All right, there's Brandon Marsh to 150, Blue Shimmer. Justin Verlander to 499. Blue Jays play tomorrow at 4 o'clock, 407 Eastern. They will be hosting the they're in Toronto. They're hosting the Oakland A's. Looks like Marcus Stroman will be on the mound. So let's see if uh, it's out of 125, Edward Cabrera. Is he? I don't. I actually did not read any additional news. Um, is Vlad Guerrero Jr. Is he supposed to start tomorrow, or is he just being called up?
Ooh. Rookie of the Year favorites, Corbin Burns for the Brew Crew. 10 out of 150. That goes to Brian O. and the Brewers. Good. Made it worth staying up late on a school night. There it is. Could be more, too. So I have one more autograph in here and another three in that last box. There's Victor Victor Mesa. And there's Zach Collins out of 150. No, not basketball player Zach Collins. Baseball player Zach Collins. I think Zach Collins. Tim, or Trailblazer Zach Collins spells it with a H. C A C H. Anyway, that goes to the White Sox. Here's Alec Baum to 299. Supposed to be the bomb for the Phillies. Corner infielder for the Phillies. And we've got Reggie Lawson. Blue Chrome Autograph, 56 out of 150 for the Friars. Michael Tran with San Diego. San Diego. Any other parallels here? You know, Justice Sheffield might be called up at some point this season, too, for the Mariners. All right, boys and girls. Look, we made it. Last box coming up. Final three autographs. Thanks for hanging out and sticking with me, folks. I'm back in action here after recovering a little bit from mild seasonal cold, mostly in my throat area, which is the money maker. So that's feeling a lot better. Back in action. Thank you very much, everybody. This is our last break of the night. Anything else that may have filled up will be going off tomorrow. Short slate today in baseball. It's a Thursday. It's a travel day. Only one game still going on. Oh, because the Mariners scored 14 runs. The eighth inning just wrapped up. Mariners up 14-2 on the Rangers. The Diamondbacks shut out the Pirates 5-0. Dodgers edged out the Cubs for a win in Wrigley 2-1. Reds beat the uh, Braves 4-2 in Cincinnati. In extras, Miami beat 
Philadelphia in 10 innings, 3-1. to one. I was on Philadelphia. Uh, Red Sox, 7-3 over the Tigers. Cleveland edged out the Astros 2-1. And after leading, the Angels came back. They stormed back. They were down 4-0. Ended up winning 11-5. Good luck. Oh, thanks to MLB.com. What I need, to, what we need to know about Vlad Jr.'s debut. Uh huh. Uh huh. Mm hmm. And we know why he's such a big deal. How can you watch? Oh, it's MLB.tv's free game of the day, folks. The A's, uh, A's Blue Jays game. How will the Blue Jays use him? Oh, I guess he is starting. He's the new starting third baseman. Brandon Drury will move across the diamond to second base. And Eric Sosgard will return to a backup infielder role. Guerrero will be considered an everyday player, but he's going to get some occasional starts at DH. All right. Not sure where Guerrero's going to be hitting in the lineup. He'll be facing Mike Fires on the Blue Jays, or on the A's. How does Dad do? The elder Guerrero made his debut for the Expos on September 19th, 1996. Atlanta, age 21. Guerrero went one for five with a single in the second at bat of the day. And apparently still some questions about Guerrero's defense. So we'll see. Tatis Jr.'s defense is pretty stellar. All right. All right, there's Jay Groom to 150. And there's Keegan Thompson for the Cubbies, EA with the Cubs. That's a little off center in that top over there. Yeah, Brewers having a rough week, I think. I think the Dodgers had a good series against them. Cole Tucker's up, folks. Just add him to my fantasy team. Looks like, um, I'm blanking on his name, but whoever was playing shortstop, Eduardo Rodriguez, something like that, um, is apparently going to be out for like 10 weeks. So If you're in a deep league and you need a little speed, he's a speedy guy. I think they'll let him run. Fernando Tatis Jr. And there's Justice Sheffield, except it's Yankees edition for the autograph. There you go. That goes to the Bronx Bombers, Sherry, with the Yankees. He got moved to the Mariners in that James Paxton deal. All right, one more autograph to go in this break.
There's uh, Orvelis Martinez to 125 for the Blue Jays. Robert with the Blue Jays. And the other half of this box here. And Gabriel Cancel. 35 out of 150 is your final autograph of the break. Blue Chrome Auto for Rich Schmidt and the KC Royals. Nice. So those are your autographs. Thanks, everybody. Let's go through the rest of these to see if we have some uh, parallels. We can spot before we call it a break. Brian O saying, hey, the Brewers have major pitching issues. That's what's hurting them right now. They didn't address them in the offseason. It's hurting. We rushed Woodruff and Burns, Corbin Burns, into spots. They into spots and didn't really perform. Those are guys are better and maybe starting out in the pen. Would a uh, would a Dallas would Dallas Keuchel make sense to pick that guy up for the uh, for the Brew Crew? I think he's still available, right? Trades. I mean, they're going to be. There's Cole Wind of 499. They're going to be battling for that first place spot along with the Cubs and the Cardinals the rest of the way. No thanks, is Brian on Dallas Keuchel. Velocity is down. He wants big bucks. Yeah, I think Dallas Keuchel may have may have outsmarted himself, out negotiated himself in this off season. I think he was coming off an injury too, wasn't he? There's Juan Soto, purple paper to 250. Eloy Jimenez, 10 out of 50 gold paper. Otani in that Bowman Sterling format that always looks cool. Bowman Sterling coming back to the tops rotation later this year. We'll have it, jazbeescasebreaks.com. And there you have it, Joe, for jazbeescasebreaks.com. That was Bowman Jumbo, 2019 Bowman Baseball Jumbo Edition. Pick your team 10 in the books. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you next time.